Sorry, writing notes. Because it's weird how I can, I think I can, you know, like think everything thoroughly and then thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. And then um, all of a sudden, at the last minute, like, oh, you forgot this, or you forgot to get this, or certain things you wanted to say. Anyway, hi all. <laughs> Monday, Monday, right before Thanksgiving. Do you believe it? It's like, we're like in the final countdown of the year. It's just insane to me. Like, we've got, let's see, what, four or five weeks uh, in, in December, and then a week and a half, two, another week and a half left of um, November. So, 2018 is quickly approaching. So, yay, yay, okay. So, while we give people a chance to log on if they want to join us, um, somebody asked what chaos um, kind of goes on right before I start these little live videos. It's not really a whole lot of chaos. It's really a whole lot of my own mindset and um, <laughs> my craziness to have everything perfect, even though it's okay if things aren't perfect, but in my head they have to be. So um, anyway, oh, there's people like, lots of people coming on. So if you're joining, say hey. Hey girl, hey. Anyways, um, so right before I, like usually like 10 minutes before I go live. Well, throughout the day, I make little notes. I have a um, piece of paper where I make little notes on specific things that need to be mentioned um, about whatever we're doing that evening or um, notes, you know, anything that maybe I want to discuss or whatever. Um, anyways, so I make sure I go through and I write that and that's kind of like an all day thing. I start it in the morning and you know, jog on it throughout the day. And then usually about 10 minutes, 15 minutes before I go live, I go pee probably 10 times. <laughs> Part of it's nerves, but also a lot of it is because um, I drink like three of these a day and these are I think 30 ounces. Yeah, 30 ounces, I guess. I drink like three of these a day, at least, three a day. Um, so I go pee like 10 times right before the start because that's like the worst. Is like if you're sitting there like holding your bladder when you need to be doing something else. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I drink um, tons of water um, and sometimes I make myself a little pre-drink Something to kind of, you know, ease the nerves. Um, some days I'm a little bit more nervous than others. Um, as we go along, these are getting a bit easier, but there are some days where it's just like, why am I doing this? This is crazy. Does that make sense to me? So, um, <laughs> yeah, I have myself a little drink to take the edge off or whatever. Um, but I do go through and, you know, of course, put the ice in the martini shaker, grab, you know, whatever cold ingredients, make sure I've got all the supplies that I need. Um, like tonight, we've got um, the hot glue gun, so I had to make sure I just turned that on. Um, so little things like that. So it's not really that chaotic in my head, it feels like that way, but um, I think I make it a bit more chaotic than it really is. <laughs> So anyway, tonight we are doing the um, Cran Apple Martini. Um, we're kind of approaching winter, so winter martinis are, you know, about to roll out. And um, this is the last of the fall martinis. And cranberry and apple are a good fall combination. So, um, cran apple martinis tonight. And then we're gonna make these awesome flowers. This is something I just learned to do several months ago, and they look like they are so much more difficult than they really are. 
but again, I'm super simple, easy peasy, and um, I would be showing y'all something that took a ton of time. So we're going to do some of those. But first, of course, we always start with a martini. Again, as you guys join on, please say hello. I'm so glad Bethany is a faithful watcher, <laughs> joiner, yeah, listener, watcher, yeah, something like that. I need to come up, you know how like um, Lady Gaga calls her, um, it's like House of Gaga or Little Demons, I think is what she calls them, and um, Mariah Carey calls her followers her little lambs. Um, I need to come up with like a martini with Amanda, like Amanda thing or something. Yeah, but something nice, not like something stupid like Montana Monkeys or something, or Amanda Monkeys. That's weird. Yeah, so, anyways. Hi, my mom is here and my friend Rosemary. Yay. Okay, so we're going to do the Crayon Apple Martini. Cran apple martini, you need, of course, a shaker with ice, you need cranberry juice, you need sour apple pucker, and vodka. We are going to do, um, I've got my notes all spread out all over the place, and usually I have them all on one page. Um, you are going to do one part sour apple pucker. And in all honesty, if you had just plain apple schnapps, this it would probably have a completely different taste. So if you don't like the um, sour apple mixture that you make, do the um, find a regular apple schnapps. You're going to do a part or half a part of um, vodka. So one part sour apple schnapps, half part vodka, and two parts cranberry juice. What's weird, when I was growing up, I did not like cranberry juice at all. Not one bit. Thought it was disgusting and vile and tart and horrible. But at some point over the years, I have come to enjoy it. In fact, um, I will even drink it straight out of the bottle. If it's cold. I mean, if it's warm, it's not good. But, um, yeah. I enjoy cranberry juice now. And then, of course, pour. And you have a cran apple martini. Please, guys, if you ever um, make these at home, let me know. Go back and um, find, you know, the picture in the martini folder, the recipes folder that I made, and comment. Let me know. Um, yep, green apple, perfect. All right. So, like I said, tonight we are making. these guys and there are tons of different ways you can make them and um, there are tons of different patterns you can make uh, or use but um, in general this is the same way that you're going to make these it doesn't matter what pattern you use you're going to make them the same way so and of course the size reference there's my head. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's pretty big. Anyways, so what you're going to need is you go online. If you type in um, wallflower template or flower petal template or stencil, um, petal stencil, something like that, you'll come across a especially if you hit the images tab on Google, you will come up with tons and tons and tons of graphics where people have added um, various pages that look like this. 
So this is one stencil. That would be one stencil. So whatever you want your pebbles to look like. You've got tons of um, stencils that you can um, just print off, put into Word, resize to the size that you know you want. And then um, all you're doing is, this is what we're doing this evening. This is the one that I print out. So there is my large um, petal. And then here is my small. Now, you could use that one if you wanted. I wanted mine a tiny bit bigger. So I did a little bit of resizing. And there's my other size. You can't really tell there. And then there's my smaller one. But all you gotta do is find whatever template you like and then size them the way that you want them. It's, I mean, super, that simple. And then all you're doing is finding whatever cardstock that you um, want to put in your colors. Um, don't think they all have to be the same color. It doesn't have to be all, you know, this one is all like a, you know, light lavender, lilac color or so, real light color. If you wanted to, um, do like an ombre type thing, do darker to a um, little bit lighter to lighter, you could certainly do that with, you know, yellow middle. Um, so don't think that it has to be all one color. But pick out whatever color um, paper you want. Now, for me, consistently, I have needed six of the largest. Now, of course, the larger flower that you want to do, the more petals you're going to need. But for me, um, six of the largest. And then I've only needed five of the middle and the smaller. But there has been an occasion where I have needed that sixth one. So whenever I suggest, or whenever I um, tell anybody to do these, I would suggest that you always cut out six of each petal, just in case. You're definitely going to need six of the larger, but you're probably only going to need five of the um, medium and the small. So, you got your patterns. And you have cut out your, put your, um, of course, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's self-explanatory. Cut out the large petals, six of those. And then if you do six of these, you can actually put six of each. So you can put the medium and a smaller on that and um, cut out six easily there. So you're not wasting a ton of paper. Um, if you watch Hobby Lobby and their sales, you can get um, paper um, for super cheap, but um, if you don't, you're gonna be paying like a dollar seventy-nine cents. Well, these are actually probably like fifty-nine cents a piece. Um, the big square pieces, the twelve by twelves, are usually like seventy-nine cents. So if you um, get it during a sale, usually they're half off, which is so much more worth it. So. I've already gone through and cut out my large pieces. I've already gone through and cut out my medium pieces. And I have already gone out and cut out my medium, or my small pieces. Now, let me show you. Once you have cut out your medium pieces, this is, or your small pieces, sorry. <laughs> your small pieces. Um, you are going to you see how you've got a flat side there. You're just going to cut a little slit right there in the middle. You can see that. Just a little slit right there in the middle. Don't go too far up. About half inch, three-fourths inch or so up or whatever. Um, and I have done that with a couple of them just to, um, and I'm doubling them up. Just I got two pieces here. Because again, it's all about saving time. Okay, so you've got your small piece here. Now all you're going to do is, you see how you've got that slit there? What you're going to do is 
You're just going to fold one piece over another, just like that. Does that make Does that make sense? Can you see that easily? You're just going to fold it under just a little bit of that. That way, so it creates just a little bit of a looks like the leaf is the leaf is curved. Actually, first you're going to do this. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you drink a tiny bit before um, you go live. You can take a pen and put it on the end of your petal and just curl it in some. Not a ton. That way, so it gives it a little bit of a curve. Or you can take your petal and put it against a. Um, somewhat, you know, hard surface and um, pull it down against it. That way so it gives it just a little bit of a curve. So um, it depends on how much of a curve you want it to have. It's not really that deep because once you start putting it all together, everything kind of falls into place and um, it'll look fine. So um, like I said, you could use a round object of a pen or a um, marker, pencil is fine. Okay, so like I said, once you have curved the leaves, you are going to um, take one side and just fold it over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot glue, I'm going to put it on one side of the leaf right there. Ah, of course, I see here and preach about how I don't burn myself, and then I do. And then just glue it in place. That way so it doesn't um, come apart, of course. So all y'all that saw my post earlier say about how I'd gone a month or so without burning myself. Guess what? You just saw me burn myself. <laughs> anyway, so okay, again, same thing with all of the pieces. And why is it that hot glue can like stick to everything? It doesn't take a whole lot of hot glue to um, make the pieces stick. And it and you could do this just with um, regular glue, but it just takes a little bit longer. Hot glue dries so much more quickly. I'm sure some of y'all are just like laughing at right now. So with that being said, why not? Okay, right, so like I said, when you do these, you're going to need to um, have at least at least five. I would always prepare six when you're doing um, each layer of petals. And I had planned ahead and done all of these earlier, but evidently I forgot to make extra of the smaller ones because I've already done the um, medium and the large. Like I said, it doesn't take a ton of glue. It's paper. It dries super quickly. I'm going to make six um, petals even though I'm pretty sure I only need five. Give it a second to um, dry. And of course, like I said, you're going to do this with the medium and the large. Also, what you're going to do is you are going to cut out a big circle. I took a bowl that was in our house and um, just traced the bowl, made a great big circle. Enough that would be big enough to fit the... Um, big 
pebbles I'm going to show you here in a minute. So um, you've got your six small petals. And what you're going to do is, this is what is kind of like the puzzle of it all, is you're going to hot glue them together. Basically you're going to take corner to corner or so and glue them together. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you want to, of course, put as many petals. You want to put six petals if you can. But because of the way that we bend them, it could be a little bit more difficult. Like I said, if it's, um, if you have to use five, that's fine. And all you're going to do is create a circle. Create a circle with the five pieces. And this is the exact same process you're going to do with the medium and the small, or the medium and the large. Um, petals. Yeah, because see, I've got one, two, three, four. I'm only going to need five petals here. Y'all let me know if you have any questions or if I'm not describing something well. All right. And it's just paper, y'all. It's just paper. So don't get scared if um, it is not um, perfect. It's just paper. It bends. It moves with you. And I just put... glue on my table. Alright, so here are my five, yeah, five leaves making the um, small, this is with the small petals. That makes sense? I hate glue guns for this thing and this thing only because they leave strings all over the place. Okay, right, so it's with the small petals. Okay, right, so I've already done this with the medium, and I've already done this with the large. So there's large, medium, and small. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the small to the side for now. You got your medium. Remember that big circle I told you to cut out, grab a bowl or something? What you're going to want it to do is you're going to want it to fit on the bottom of your large petals. So, um, like I said, just um, once you put your large petals together, you want to cut out a circle that's going to fit on the bottom there. And then what you're going to do is, I have stuff all over the place, y'all. Start throwing stuff here in a minute. I'm gonna be like some like weird housewife of Montana <laughs> group or something. I'm gonna need to put our new glue stick here because it could be in a minute. Okay, anyway, um, all you're gonna do is you're going to hot, 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 y'all. You're going to put a ton of, um, well not a ton, you're going to put um, your hot glue on the bottom of your big circle and then put it to the bottom of your big, your largest um, petals. Again, don't ma it doesn't matter if it presses on because I've got a piece here that's kind of lifted up. It's not completely, you know, flush or whatever. That's fine. Because you're not going to see it here in a minute. Seriously. The glue gun strings drive me batty. Arr! Yeah. <laughs> Alright. So, you have made your... Oh, and I'm standing up, so let me... Adjust this bit. Alright, so you're going to... Um, now, you've got your... 
face that I took too much time talking instead of paying attention. Okay, so then what you're going to do after that is once you have that base, that circle, um, hot glued to your large petals, you're going to take your medium petals. Kind of think of where you want to position them. I like to position them where a petal is meeting a gap. So, like right here, there's a gap. So I'm going to, of course, put a petal there if I can. Y'all, again, y'all are so quiet. So if it doesn't make sense, let me know. Put um, glue on the bottom. And my husband just came home. We had the garage going up. Here, or, um, put the um, glue on the bottom there. Position it where you want. and push it into place. Again, it's just paper. Don't stress it. Paper moves. And then you're going to do the exact same thing with the smaller ones. Think about where you want to put it. Because ideally, I go up. Hey. Yeah, so, you came home. Anyway, so what you're going to do is you are going to position these to where you want them to, um, of course, go. You're going to stick glue all across the bottom. And then just push it into place. Hot glue doesn't take much time at all to dry, so give it, you know, a couple seconds to make sure that, you know, it's all where you know you want it to be. <laughs> My husband is lost. He doesn't know what to do right now because he's come home in the middle of this. Philip, he's already gone out. He's good. You want to come say hi? I'm good. Okay, he says he's good. So never mind. Anyways, so there's our flower so far. Now all we have to do now is the middle. Now, this is where, like I said, if you um, don't want to put it on your walls, which is fine, this is where you could um, totally make it a Thanksgiving um, decor kind of thing, your table decor. Put it on your table like that. If you have a vase, a vase, I call it a vase. Put it on your table like that. The vase fits perfectly in the middle. Whatever candle, flower arrangement, whatever you want. So like I said, this isn't something that just has to be on the walls. Think about, you know, other ways that it could go throughout your house. So, but mind you, if you have it sitting out, it's still gonna collect dust. I am not one for a ton of knickknacks, so you're not going to find a ton of dust or knickknacks that co collect dust, you know, in my house. So anyways, Thanksgiving decor, there you go. Colors, do orange, yellow, greens, whatever. You got it right there. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to add the center. What you're going to do is you are going to grab... Whatever paper you want for the center, it could be totally the same color that you want. The same color as what you've already done. Cut out a strip. And all you're going to do is you are going to cut almost down to the end. Definitely don't cut all the way to the end. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, then 
And what you're going to do is you're just going to start rolling every once and um, every once in a while. You're just going to put a oh no, my glue gun wants to stick to my plate. Every once in a while, you're going to stick a um, dash of glue just to keep it from um, unraveling. It's not really that deep though. Don't think like it's, you know, that hard. And you're just gonna roll it. And this is completely on preference, how thick you want the um, middle to be. I've already cut out several strips. Dot of hot glue and just keep rolling. I'm going to do another one of these after this just so you get the point and just so my flower looks decent. Like I said, it doesn't take a ton. This is not um, something that you have to. Worry a ton. There's nothing here that is like measurements and specifics. You make it as thick as you want to make it. Okay, and once you have that done, give it a second to, of course. you know, harden the, you know, the hard, and all you're going to do is you're just going to push all of those pieces apart. Remember, it's, it's not about perfection. It doesn't have to be what you would see as like symmetrical or anything like that. Put it all Push them apart. I could have probably added one more um, layer of the um, yellow just to make it a little bit fuller. But scrunch it up. It's not about perfect. It's just spread it out. Think about the inside of a flower. When you look at it, what does it look like? And then spread it out. And then all you're going to do, stick a crap ton of hot glue there. I pour a whole lot in the inside. And just press it into place. Once it dries, you can push the um, flowers, or push the... Um, you know, the, what is this part? The, when I taught pre-K, it was stigma or stamen. You can push all that into place or whatever. Y'all help me out here. Don't make me feel like I'm like here by myself. This is not making me feel like all optimistic about next week and everything. I'll tell you about that in a second. So, um, once you have glued it into place, it's there, give it a second to, you know, dry or anything. There your flower. And the reason why I did yellow was that way so you could see the um, difference. Um, and the other flowers I have made, I um, did the same color, um, of course. Again, for those of you that are awesome at, um, you know, color combinations and party planning and all that kind of stuff, um, maybe you can see better ways to do this. Again, um, I'm thinking ombre, you know, dark to light to light to light, and then, you know, a bold center color or whatever, you know, center color. So, um, but essentially, that's it. It's done. 
And then all you would have to do if you wanted to hang it up on the wall is um, if you wanted to, you could, um, these are light enough that if you did some mask, like a heavy duty masking tape or um, a tack or anything like that, you could push it through and um, get it to hang up that way. So um, they, depending on what kind of paper you use, it's how heavy it'll be. This is all cardstock and it's super lightweight. I hung um, one up with um, masking tape the other day and it didn't fall for a couple hours. So um, there you go, just like that. So with that being said, did all that make sense? Please, 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 please let me know. Was there something that um, I did not show properly? If um, there's something you want me to do again, and um, yes, command strips would be perfect for that. Although me and command strips don't get along, it doesn't matter how much I follow the instructions, it doesn't matter what I do, it always takes off a part of my wall. So I typically don't buy command strips. It is a whole lot easier for me to buy some wall filler and um, brush a coat of paint over it and call it a done deal. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah, it's that simple. Perfect Thanksgiving decor, perfect for parties. Um, if you have a little girl, perfect, you know, embellishments for a little girl's room. Um, Super, super easy, not time consuming, <laughs> time consuming, and um, like I said, you can completely customize them and make them, you know, as big or small as you want, colors, all that stuff. All right, so, with all that being said, y'all know what's next week, don't ya? It's only... The best day in the whole wide world. Next Sunday is my birthday. And if you don't know, it's my favorite holiday in the whole wide world. Why? Because my birthday is all about me. It's about me, 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 me. Yeah, I'm not one of those people, if my birthday falls on Thanksgiving, guess what? You better give me another day. I love my birthday. <laughs> so next Sunday is my birthday. So next Monday, I will be celebrating my birthday with y'all. And um, in order to do that, um, not in order to do that, really. Um, Next Monday, we will be talking about the year 1979. Yeah, it was the year I was born. So next Monday, we're just gonna sit here and chat. We're gonna drink, we're gonna have us a good time because it's my birthday and I'm gonna throw myself a little online birthday party. Um, I thought it would be a lot easier than um, it would be, but when I start planning it, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. But anyways, so next Monday night, we will be chatting and talking and just hanging out. 1979, talking about my birthday year, November 1979, talk about all the things that were going on during that year. And um, we are going to make one of my favorite favorite martinis one of my favorite martinis like I've been making this martini for probably eight years or so this is like one of my pivotal like it's winter it's my birthday it's you want a creamy yummy martini we're making this and I'm gonna go ahead and warn y'all that on my birthday, my favorite thing to do is take the day off and day drink. 
So going into my birthday, guess what? That Monday night, I don't expect a ton of um, things being logical, maybe, <laughs> coherent or whatever. So um, anyway, so yes, next Monday night, we will be talking my birthday, 1979, talking about the things that happened during 1979, not just on the day. And we'll be making the oatmeal cookie martini. So with all that being said, um, since before I see you guys next week, we will see Thanksgiving. I hope all of you guys have a happy and safe and wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, of course, I'll still be posting and chatting and seeing what you guys have to say. Um, so, with all that being said, love y'all. Thank you all for joining me this evening, and I hope to see y'all next Monday night. Bye.